Hi, year four. So today we're moving on to multiplication of money. So we've done addition, we've done subtraction, and now we're on to multiplication. So hopefully by the end of today's lesson, you will be able to multiply amounts of money. So let's do some examples together again like we have been doing. So if you remember back to our addition and subtraction, and we use exactly the same methods as what we would normally do with an addition and subtraction sum, it's just that they've got a unit that we need to pop in at the end. And it's going to be the same for multiplication. So 32 times 5. If you remember, your 5, or your, your, your digit you're multiplying by, always goes in your unit column. Okay, so the first thing we do, if you've forgotten, we multiply um, the unit with the 5. So 5 times 2 is 10. Okay, and then we go this way like that. So 5 times 3 is 15, and 1, 16. So we've got 160 pounds. So check my units. Okay, now can we convert that into pounds and pence? How many pounds? Remember, 100 pennies in a pound, we've got 160. So hopefully you've been able to realise that there's one pound decimal and there's 60 pence. Let's have a look at the next one. So 85 pence times 6. So my 6 goes in my units and the first thing I do is I multiply these two in my units column together. So 6 times 5. 6 times 5 is 30. Then I go this way across. So 6, 8. Well 6, 8 to 48. Add 3, 51, 510. Now, we can put 510 pence, would it be wrong, but can you convert it into pounds and pence? So last time we had 100, so we had one pound. This time we've got 500, so we've got five pounds, and we've got 10, don't we? Five pound, 10. Okay, let's have a look at the next one. So we've got a little bit of a bigger number this time. £3.25 times 4. So exactly the same, we've just got to times by another digit this time. So 5 times 4 is 20. Then I go this way. 4 times 2 is 8. And 2 is 10. So carry my 1. Now, you can see here there's a decimal in this number here, so what have I got to put in my answer? If there's a decimal in the question, my answer has to have a decimal in as well. So then I do 4 times 3, which is 12, add the 1, 13. Okay, so I've got pounds for my units there, so that's why I've transferred that to my answer as well. So 13 pounds is my answer. This is really important. If it's in your question, it needs to be in your answer. Hopefully, with a good habit of doing that in the way over the last couple of days. £12.53. So I can see I've got a decimal there, so I must know that I've got to put the decimal into my answer. If you want to do it straight away so you didn't forget, absolutely fine. So start here. 5 times 3 is 15. Move along to the next one. So I'm always timesing by the 5. 5 times 5 is 25. Add 1, 26. Next one. 5 times 2 is 10. Add 2 is 12. And then 5 times 1 is 5. Add 1, 6. Check my units. Pounds. Okay, so 62 pounds, 65 pence. So, nice and easy, just don't be again, don't be fooled just because you've got units in there or a little decimal point. As long as you put the decimal point and line it up correctly, so your decimal's here, it's got to be in a line underneath it. You can't then start putting a decimal point in there or here, it's got, it's got to be lined up. As long as your decimal point's, point's lined up and you've got some units in there and you've done careful working out, you won't go wrong. So, your task today is to read page 267 in your Galore Park book 
and then complete exercise 21.4. And again, we want you to remember decimals in your answers, units in your answers, copy the numbers really carefully, um, make sure your number you're typed in by is right at the far right, ready to be multiplied by the big number, so in this position here, okay? And you uh, will do great, okay? Good luck.